Welcome to Paddle Play TV wherein we review and analyze table tennis matches. For this episode, we will be reviewing the first ever, the historical game between two masters of this sport. We are now in the stage one of the Table Tennis World Cup 2024. Players are grouped into 16 groups consisting of three players each. Top four players in the tournament will be the top seed in groups one to four, and the remaining players will be drawn to the other groups in a modified snake system. Stage two will be a knockout draw. For the first time in the history of table tennis, ITTF will be implementing a new rule in this stage. Players will need to play four games no matter what. By the end of this match, you will fully understand this new rule. We will start with the match of Dang Cho of Germany and Ahmed Salah of Egypt. Dang Cho is in this tournament and you may be wondering, will Timo Boll and Dmitry Ovtrov play as well? They were in the initial list, but they withdrew from the World Cup. Amit Sala is the oldest top 100 player right now. He is currently 44 years old. If we are to rank the oldest in the top 100 right now, we have Amit Sala as the oldest followed by Gionis Paniotis of Greece currently 44 years old, Timo Boll of Germany and Chuang Chi Yuan of Taiwan both 43 years of age. Amit Sala current sits at world number 58 while Dang Chiu is currently world's number 10 at 27 years old. What a rally this is turning out to be. What a great start here by Amit Sala winning the first game against the German top player. Amit has a great strategy winning this game one against the penholder. He is abusing the backhand side of Dang Chiu. When Dang Chiu is committing in his backhand side, Amit quickly changes the direction going for the far forehand that eventually leads to his point. Look at the ball placements of Amit, he always go for the far left or far right corner. He battles in backhand punches, opposite attacks then later on going for the parallel. Beautiful IQ to win this game one of the match. Dang Chiu needs to get comfortable. His attacks are forced. Yeah, there's a bit of an unknown quality here for him. China players from China who played for other countries, and then if you look at players like Dan Chiu, who's definitely this game uh, uh, quite well. But in the 80s and 90s, when you know European players were coming out, you know, all over the place, and Dang Chiu is getting hot in this game too. Just look at him going for third balls and first balls. His forehand top spins are just going in, and he is setting a mark this game too. I believe Dang Chiu finally got his rhythm to play this intensity. If he continues this, he is unstoppable against the Egyptian legend. Game 2 was quick with Amit Sala getting only 3 points in this second game. With the hot hands of the German, he must now summon the Egyptian gods to help him win this match. Amit Sala is just phenomenal to have this display of skill despite his age and yes, he is 44 years old as I mentioned earlier. He is the oldest player in the top 100 globally. I love the sound of Amit Saleh's equipment, you can really hear the sound of the carbon. If you know his equipment, let me know in the comments section. Dang Cho uses a customized ALC blade from Butterfly, kinda looks like Timo Bowl ALC, but it's different. He uses Dignix 09C and Dignix 05. Amit Sala is a legend in table tennis, especially in African table tennis. He beat Quadri Aruna back then in 2020. He is also a champion in African Cup quite a few times and even the African Championships in the last decade. Meanwhile, Dang Cho is also a top player in Europe winning the European Championships, and he must be the top player of Germany as of this year.
Yeah. In the first game, it's like he was settling in. I don't know whether he was... Have a light, light of fire under you and... The hot hands of Dang Cho just continues to burn the Egyptian legend. Dang Cho used Game 1 to read the plays of Ahmed. Comparing the service win rate of Dang Cho, he only got 44% service win rate in Game 1. Game 2, he started to become hot and he just keeps on attacking the balls of Ahmed. He was unstoppable that game with an impressive 75% service win rate. Now, during the third game, he started to wind down with Ahmed nearly overcoming the point deficit. Dang Cho had a 63% service win rate in Game 3 showing, he is starting to go lose his hotness. Will this game be the redemption time of Ahmed? Dang Cho leading at 2-1, can Ahmed tide the game at 2-2? Is a price pot of one million US dollars, which is uh, fantastic to see the prize pool. Lights my eyes up always. As well. What a great recovery of Ahmed that time to grab his fifth point going on a head to head backhand attack with Dan Cho. Dang Cho had the gameplay in that point, but he lost his control when he changed the direction of the ball going to the far right of Ahmed. If that went in, it would be one of the highlights of this game. This is huge. He's leading by four. If he makes it a two all, oh, that was not a good serve. This game after the big timeout by Ahmed Saleh. Earlier, but eight four, he's got a chance here. Five, yeah. eight. It's going to come down to him having to beat Shunsuke Togami. Saleh to serve. Ten. Oh, beautifully. And uh, game point here. Six, ten. Just beautiful punches from Ahmed in that game four. The punch and sound of those attacks are just music to the ears. Dang Cho lost this match because he lost control and the power of Ahmed just went up compared to his game two and three performance. Great performance coming from the aging legend that at 44 years old, he was able to show that he can be on par with a European champion. Well, you must have seen them shake hands already. So what happened? Who won? As I mentioned earlier, this is the first time the International Table Tennis Federation right, made a new rule. No one won that match as it resulted in a draw. You have never witnessed a draw in a table tennis match before. This is the first time in the history of table tennis. The rule is for them to play four games and whoever wins the most games wins the match, but as we witnessed, not one of them had the lead. It resulted in a draw. Will this be in the entire World Cup tournament? Well, no. This is only for the group stages as if we advance further in this tournament, we will be using best of seven matches. Before we end our game review, what do you think of this new rule? Are you in favor of draw in matches? Well, let me hear you in the comments. Thank you for watching, and we will be seeing you in the next episode. I wouldn't have dreamt of it at that point of time, but they do.